On this channel, I'm consistently receiving positive feedback on the color and the tone of my portrait images that I really do appreciate. I've covered the tonal side of great skin, so the contrast and the texture in a separate video, but today I wanna to focus on the hardest process and that's the color science behind great skin. I'll be covering my five step editing process for this. So let's just jump right into it. So before we jump onto Lightroom, we first need to understand how and why modern camera sensors have this unflattering green to yellow cast to the skin despite the camera brand we use and how to use color science to fix this. Raw files don't actually have a great skin tone straight out of the box and each camera brand interprets data differently, especially white balance, which is one of the main reasons why one camera brand might make skin look pink and another slightly green. Sure, they try to address this with their own camera profiles and some definitely work better than others, which we'll talk about shortly and my recommendations. But once you apply the profile and you use the color calibration and the RGB curves to correct this unpleasant skin color, that's when the true color science begins. We all know that image is made up of red, green, and blue pixels. These are what we call primary colors of light and when they're mixed together, they form secondary colors. Also, when red, green, and blue are mixed in equal amounts, we get white. Today, I'll be teaching you the color science behind great skin, so we can use this color science knowledge of mixing the primary colors to create beautiful skin tones. For a quick example, in the RGB curve, if we decrease blue, this combination of primary colors results in the color gold. It results in shifting that unflattering green to yellow cast to a golden skin tone. And if you lift that red a touch more, that golden tone transitions into a soft peach or a rosy warm skin tone. So I have a few color combinations to show you today and I'm also gonna show you my five step process to great skin tones in Lightroom. All right guys, before we jump in real quick, I get a lot of questions asking about my desk setup. I've linked everything down below and I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again, this monitor is a non-negotiable for me. It's color accurate and calibrated straight out of the box and it's also linked down below. So the foundation of this process is getting a good base to work from before we touch any of the color sliders. So this process only really works if you follow in chronological order. And step one is selecting the correct camera profile. So guys, for demonstration purposes, I've got four different files here. So the first one here is a Sony file. We have a Nikon file, a Fujifilm file, and also a Canon file. Now, all four of these look very similar because they are in the color profile of Adobe Color, which neutralizes all these raw files to match in terms of color and contrast. But if you come up to these four little dots, you can open up a bunch more different profiles. And Adobe give us seven different profiles, so Adobe Color and also Adobe Standard are definitely my favorite for portraits. I don't like the Adobe Portrait because it gives this kind of weird green cast. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see camera matching, and this is profiles from the camera manufacturer. And for a Canon file, if you just hover over camera neutral, you can see straight out of the gate, those skin tones actually do look fantastic compared to the Adobe color but you can achieve this look with the color calibration and then you can match this look across all different camera brands. Now we're on the Nikon file and Nikon have 35 different profiles, which I think is way too many. Like what is this one for? Tell me in the comment down below. But they actually have their camera portrait and their camera neutral, which actually do look a little bit more flattering than the Adobe color. But again, with some contrast and some color calibration, you can get this look very easily. Back onto the Sony file, and Sony have the worst camera profiles in the history of camera manufacturers for portrait photographers. I do not recommend using any of these. Lastly, this is the Fujifilm file and Fujifilm give you 20 creative camera profiles. So these won't give you very accurate colors compared to the Canon or the Nikon, but they give you a more stylistic approach. Definitely the Prodex standard and the high gives you the most 
neutral look but it also gives you absolutely fantastic skin tones the Asia soft actually looks fantastic as well and real quick guys something that's super exciting is that my friend at fujifly has actually made these fuji profiles across all different camera brands so we're on fujifilm's Asia soft and if we hover over the Asia there's no change because he's made them very, very similar. If we go back to the Sony file and see how these work, you can see that these all work absolutely fantastic on a Sony file. They work on Nikon, Canon, etc. And what you can do with these profiles is that if you click on a profile and then click on your favorite preset, it will go back to Adobe Color and then you can select that profile again. You can control the amount you want here. You can close that. You can adjust your white balance, adjust your exposure. So you can have these Fujifi camera profiles as a base and then apply a preset on top of them. And they work absolutely fantastic because now you've got the tone and the contrast of your portrait images along with all of the color that you've decided to use. Check the link down below and use the discount code Jerry for 10% off. And this is not sponsored. This is just a friend of mine and I really do like his product. So I've talked about profiles here on the channel before and definitely my preference is still the Adobe profiles. And I think they are the best because you can match any look between any camera brand and also different models as some camera brands and models have a different look. Also, when you're building your own preset, you can use that preset as you grow as a photographer and dive deep into different camera brands and camera systems. But a camera profile is only the first foundational step to get a good base. We now need to learn how to tweak this base for adapting to different skin types adjusting the color to our preference or style and also adding in color contrast so step two is correcting white balance accurately correcting your white balance is super important to get right before moving on as skin tone is extremely sensitive to white balance shifts so this is an image I took a while ago on a Fujifilm camera which doesn't have the best auto white balance settings and you can see this is just way too warm and way too green for a good base we are in the adobe color profile so we need to move down the step and what i like to do is i like to hover over as shot and i just click on auto and i think that 99 percent of the time this gives us a great base to work from i think for this image i'm just going to pull that tint up just a little bit extra just to add a little bit of magenta into the skin tone to remove that green tone i'll slightly correct the exposure and now we're in a good base to work from to correct these skin tones and then later i will come back and do a more creative white balance shift but for now it is best to have the correct white balance as a base working forward to get nice skin tones so step three is the rgb tone curves and these are easily the most difficult and also the most misrepresented tools in Lightroom. I use the RGB curves to correct that unflattering color shift we see in majority of sensors. But before we jump into that, let me just quickly break down how these RGB curves actually work. Okay, so these are the RGB curves and we have red, green, and blue. When you lift one of these points, you add blue into the image. When you pull down in the blue channel, you're not actually adding in yellow, you're removing moving blue which results in more green and red in the image which makes up the color yellow and then this curve will not do any color this will add in white if you lift it up it will add in black if you lift it down i've made an entire video about the tone curve how it adds in contrast but with the rgb curves these are designed to add in color but they do also add in contrast so if we create a simple s curve and we copy these channel settings and we paste that in the green channel and we paste that in the blue channel we now see that we don't have any color cast at all because we've just done what this curve is designed to do and if you toggle this on and off you can see that the rgb curves do actually add in contrast the main tone curve adds in a lot more contrast as you can see by that okay so now we know how the rgb curves operate and remember earlier how i was explaining to you guys to get that golden or that rosy peach color in the mid-tones with the rgb curves well now i want to show you how we can translate that mid-tone color into our skin tone and also my approach when using this powerful tool to get a subtle film contrast to make my portrait images pop. All right guys, I just wanna quickly show you how this works on the grayscale 
detail and then we'll move to a portrait image. So if we're in the red channel and we lift up our midtone slightly, and then in the blue channel, if we bring down our midtones, we now have the red channel higher than the green and the blue channel is lower. And this results in a rosy peach color in the midtones. If we copy this tone curve and we apply it to this portrait image here, you can see that now we've got a more peach rosy tone. So here's a before and here's an after. If we go back to the red channel and we hold the shift key and we drag this up, that's gonna add more reddish tones. If we pull down the blue channel in the midtone, that's gonna make our skin tones more golden. If we lift up red, that's gonna add a little bit more red. If we go too far, then we can lift up green a little bit closer to red, and now we get a more golden sunkiss skin tone. And then we can actually take this a little bit further and we can use Color Fairy. So we can bring down this red channel and introduce more cyan into the shadows. We can lift our blue channel up and this will make our subject stand out from the shadows and then we can also lift our blue channel up a little bit extra and drop our red channel into the highlight and since we are adding a bit of extra contrast we also get a little bit of saturation so just bring down your saturation slider a little bit and there is a before and there is an after with sun kissed skin tones and also color contrast in the highlights and also the shadows and if we copy these settings paste them back onto our grayscale you can see that we get this more minty white highlight area we get these beautiful skin tones and then in the shadows we get a more darker blue which gives us a color contrast that makes the skin tones stand out and in my opinion makes the subject pop so guys the rgb curves are incredibly difficult tools to use but once you put some time into them and you practice they become very powerful and creative tools for your skin tone and also color contrast i've linked that grayscale image down below for you guys to practice and master the curves on your own time step four is color calibration and i want to show you how lightroom's color calibration isn't really about stylizing color per se. I use it as a sensor tuning to manipulate that skin tone. And then I'll use the HSL to correct the shift that we created in the color calibration. All right guys, for demonstration purposes, I quickly made this image. So we have our primary and our secondary colors and then a portrait image for skin tone reference. Over here, we have our color calibration. So we have our red, green, and blue primary colors. And you'll notice that when you pull any of these colors so the blue primary is not only changing the blue color it's changing all of the different colors so if we bring our blue primary towards more magenta what we're doing is we're telling Lightroom use the blue primary as a more magenta color and mix that with green and red which results in this color shift let me just reset this blue primary and this portrait image is exported with Adobe color and you'll notice you're getting this bit of green to yellow yellowish tinge to the skin which is undesirable and this is the way that I fix that so I actually like to warm up my red so I bring my red towards orange which adds a little bit of extra warmth into the skin this also results in more green into the skin tone so we definitely want to bring into more magenta so sliding your green towards teal actually adds in a lot more magenta into the skin and you can notice that that is looking so much better than before there there is a before and there is an after and then i do like to correct by blue primary so you can see that our blue is very magenta which doesn't look good for skies for example so bringing the blue primary to the left actually adds in more red hues and you can see that now we've pulled back our red and our blue colors and we've also added in a little bit of extra rosy red into the skin tone of course with any of these sliders you can go too far and then i use the hsl to fine tune these colors after if if we move this blue hue it's not going to change the skin tones at all it's just going to change the blue hues so typically if i want to make this more a teal blue i'll bring that down i'll correct my greens by adding a little bit of extra warmth into the green and now we have beautiful skin tones with balanced primary and secondary colors and then finally i use the hsl as a fine tuning skin tool 
depending on the model as everyone has different skin types and different color. So I'm gonna apply one of my presets from my V3 film pack. These are based on a film look and they are linked down below. And this skin tone is a little bit on the reddish hue. So what I do is I just grab on this color picker, I select the skin and if I drag up, you'll see that the red and orange is uniformly moving. And that's just gonna add in a little bit of extra orange away from our red hue. I'll also go into the Lumosity tab and I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra Lumosity into the skin by clicking and dragging. That is gonna add more white. And then these are my settings for syncing that preset across the entire gallery so the skin tone matches and it all looks absolutely great. So if you like how these presets perform, definitely check the link down below. And if you sign up to my newsletter, you'll receive 20% off your first order. If you guys did like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and comment why if you found this video extra valuable definitely subscribe and if you guys want to learn how to get better texture in your skin tone definitely go check out this video right here if you're not going to go watch this video right now maybe go make a portrait mood board grab your favorite camera make some cool images practice these editing techniques and we will see you in the next one bye for now